Hey everyone, welcome back to the show and welcome back to Wonder May. What we have here today is the war god himself, the Collect and Connect Mattel Ares. Now, of course, all of these pieces came out of the previous four figures that we've taken a look at. Uh, the Robed Wonder Woman, Queen Hippolyta, Steve Trevor, and Diana of Themyscira. Each one of them had different pieces, and we have this Collect and Connect figure, which Collect and Connect is basically was Mattel's way of saying build a figure. And the first thing we're going to do is measure the War God and see where he's at. Now, before we do this, I want to say that I know when we started this, I said he was going to be a 10-inch figure. I can tell you right now he's not a 10-inch figure. And I apologize for saying that, but I honestly thought that he was described as a 10-inch figure. But let's see what he measures up to. And it looks like we're coming in at just under... Oh, I thought he was going to fall. It looks like he is going to fall. <laughs> it looks like he came under just under seven and a half inches tall, which makes him about an inch and a quarter taller than the previous figures, which is a decent, which is a decent size difference. So just to give you an idea of what that looks like, let's move him over here. I have a feeling he's going to be falling a lot, and I'll show you why in a moment. So we move him over there. And we bring in Wonder Woman and set her up next to him. And you can see the size difference between the two figures. An inch and a quarter doesn't sound like that big of a difference, but when you see the two of them stacked up next to each or standing next to each other, it really is it really is a noticeable difference between the two here. I'm very curious to see how Ares is going to stack up next to the McFarlane Toys seven inch figures. See what the size difference in scaling is between the two of them. So we'll get rid of Wonder Woman. And let's bring him closer so we can get a better look at him. Actually, let me raise this a little. Tilts. There we go. Okay. First of all, I love this head sculpt. I don't know if you can see the face sculpt in there. I don't know if the camera is showing it off very well. But this skull piece here is a helmet. That's not his head. And you can see his face sculpt underneath with the white eyes. And I love, I actually love how bland and featureless it is. Various parts of his body are just black. Like the war god was carved from like a solid brick of obsidian or something. I love, love, love that look for him. The sculpt of his helmet is very good too. And so is that paint app. Look at that. Look at the texturing done to it. The difference between the jaw, the shadowing of the skull, the teeth, the horns. And all of this is a very soft, pliable rubber. So it's not going to poke anything and nothing will snap off. This is all soft, safe rubber that will take its shape back. And this flap on the back of his helmet as well. You can see it bends. Now the head is on a ball joint. You have full 360 degree rotation, though his shoulder pads do tend to get in the way. Like the smaller figures, he has very little in head articulation, but part of that is just because of the overlay of his helmet right here. The shoulder pads, which are so, his shoulder armor, which is so well detailed and sculpted and painted. Just look at that. Like, look how shiny this is. Oh my gosh, this is such a great figure. He can put his arms out to the side. This side is a little difficult because his shoulder pad is a little bit more restrained by his baldric here, but you can see he can put his arms he can put his arms out to the side. Now the reason this shoulder put that down. The reason this shoulder is so much more, more stiff is because this piece right here, you can see it's loose here. It's loose here on the back, but right here. It's actually glued to his back piece. So he doesn't have this part, this shoulder pauldron here, won't flip up nearly as much as this one will. So there's a little bit of restraint there, but it's not horrible. His elbow, like I said, is on a ball joint. You can do a full 360. He has bicep swivel, single jointed elbow. He has a forearm swivel, and he has a wrist swivel, okay? 
He has a very generous ab crunch and ab twist right here, and I really like this. This really helps with the posing because he also has a waist twist. So he has numerous points of articulation, even from just the waist up, for, ver for a variety of movement. Saw his waist twist. Now his legs, his legs confuse me <laughs> because his legs, even without anything restraining him, you can see it opens up so his leg can come through, but his leg only goes that far forward, okay? However, it goes this far back. Personally, I would have rather gone the other way, that we could get a little bit more forward swing out of the leg rather than going back like this. He is on a bit of a ball joint combo. It's like a combination of like a ball joint or an H joint in there. Whoops. It's a build a figure. It happens. <laughs> but he can't do a full split, but he can split his legs much wider than the other characters, other figures can. He has a bicep swivel, which is where the leg just came apart. He has a knee, single jointed knee and an ankle pivot. Now the ankle pivot is the reason I said he might be falling over a lot because for as much as I really like this character and I like the sculpt of him and I think everything is proportioned very well, his ankles are a little small to support the weight up top. And sometimes when you set him down, the ankles actually will, let's focus this in before I go any further, the ankles actually will start to buckle as well with the knees. So you kind of have to use, you can use this ab crunch here to help balance him out. There we go. So once you find a position, he's decent. He'll stay in that position. He doesn't fall over once you find the position, but finding the position can be the trick sometimes. Now, as far as accessories go, with the four figures that we have in the set, there's only one accessory that he comes with, but he doesn't really need any more, and that is this sword. And if you remember when we looked at the Wonder Woman Warrior battle set from Lego, I said I wished the sword came in red. And this is why. This is a fantastic piece. This is a fantastic sculpt right here. I mean, look at the handle and the hilt. It looks like just forged wrought iron. Everything about this character is so primeval. I love it. It's so primeval, so industrial, so just it looks like it was just forged in the fires of hell, and I freaking love it. See, if we take a closer look, even his armor here, all of his armor looks weathered and beaten and hammered out. And sometimes on him, it's hard to tell, like especially here in the abs and in the arms, it's hard to tell where the armor stops and Ares actually begins. It's like he was all just forged from one solid piece of obsidian or steel or black iron or something and it is fantastic i really like this figure i really like the possibilities i really 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 like the look of him and he fits in so well with the rest of the lineup i really hope he matches up well with the mcfarland toys or er, er, with the mcfarland toys wonder woman because it's just going to look great. <laughs> I have the McFarlane Toys Wonder Woman. I haven't unboxed her yet. I haven't taken a look at her yet. We'll be doing that on video just like we did with these ones. And I hope she, <laughs> she measures up. <laughs> I hope she meets my expectations because in the box she looks great. Both of them do. So that's what we have here. We have the Mattel DC Comics Multiverse. Wonder Woman series, Ares, build a figure, and I really like this guy. I know I was going back and forth on the line between the four figures. There were some that I really liked, like Wonder Woman with the robe. Steve Trevor was a good one. Hippolyta was okay. Diana of Themyscira was kind of a disappointment. So I got one that I liked but was mediocre, which was Wonder Woman with the robe. I got one Steve Trevor that was rather unique to the set, and I liked him a lot. And then I got Hippolyta and Diana, and then we get Ares with it as well. And all in all, as I said in the last video, I'm glad I got the whole set. I'm a little disappointed in some of the figures, but this guy more than makes up for it. I would love to get the shield for him. 
Not real worried about the dual flaming swords. Would love to get the shield, but I don't want to spend $50 for that Wonder Woman figure. So this is it for the Mattel line that we have. We will be taking a look at the Cheetah minifigs from LEGO. We have the Wonder Woman vs. Cheetah LEGO set uh, that's out for Wonder Woman 1984. We have a few more things to take a look at, and I have at least one more piece that's coming that we're going to take a look at as well. You'll see that when we unbox it. So I hope you come back. I hope you join us again. Play well, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.